Tonight's special guest is Gary Cook. Gary is deeply interested in the concept that the Maori are not the indigenous people of New Zealand and has written a book on the subject. The book is called The People Before and tonight three lucky viewers can each win a copy. We welcome Gary Cook as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. A big welcome to Gary Cook. Welcome to The Beat Goes On. Gerard, thank you very much. And what a wonderful opportunity tonight to have a talk about our history. I, I guess the history that you and I and a lot of other viewers um, were taught uh, at school about the New Zealand history went back so far, six to seven hundred years ago, and perhaps stretching it back to nine hundred years ago with a man called Coupe, people first came to these shores. But it was about 18, 20 years ago I discovered that there was another group of people came to these shores well ahead of Māori. And these were people called the Waitaha people. And they came to these shores, or so the um, literature tells me and the stories tell me, 1800 years ago. Wow, that's which great, is incredible. And this is a big stretch of a thousand years additional history. Do you run into any opposition about this idea? Initially, yes. It seemed to be confrontational for a lot of people. And particularly when I, in my enthusiasm, I was out talking around the country uh, on my book and things like this and putting forward the premise that there were people here earlier. And often I'd be approached by, by Māori people in the audience uh, after the talk had finished and some were quite, you know, sort of uh, arms folded and um, quite defensive. confrontational. Defensive about it? Confrontational. Yeah. What really? are you talking about? What do you know? What you're saying is a lot of rubbish. And of course you, you step back from this. You don't want to really upset people in this manner. But this was balanced out by the fact there was a second grouping who had come up to me, once again with folded arms, look at me and sort of say, well I don't know about this but I'm going to go back and talk to my elders and look deeper into the history. And then, thank goodness, there was a third grouping. The person would come up to me, usually extend a hand, shake me by the hand, do a hongi, and sort of say, it's about time someone told our deeper history. And that, of course, was very reassuring, and so that got me and on. that gave you confidence to continue your, your search. It sure did. Now, even last year, uh, in December, there was a newspaper article from David Rankin now, what's David's position in Māoridom? And let's have a look at what he said. He's a Ngāpui chief. And he was quoted on the 28th of um, December as sort of saying that the academics in New Zealand have got it wrong. Who are they to question the oral traditions of Māori where our Rankin's people, the Ngāpui people, their stories say there were people on the shores when we arrived and these were people who had red hair and fair hair and were fair of skin. Wow. This is an amazing breakthrough where someone of his standing has actually come out in support of the work that all us so-called amateurs have been doing. For Māori people who have investigated this, they now have a deeper whakapapa in this land. Their genealogy goes back further, which is exciting. And also it puts another people here. So why were these uh, initial stories, oral histories, why were they ignored by our mainstream writers of, of our history? Mainly because around about the turn of the last century um, when anthropologists and historians were looking very very closely uh, at stories which had been recorded by early explorers and adventurers here they were trying to sift through and get the story of Māori and of course most of the stories told of founding walkers and when the walkers arrived and the um, crew landed in this country and every Māori person of today has a line which goes back to one of the crew members of one of the walkers, which is magnificent and, and that is wonderful. But for all of that, there were still people within New Zealand who had the Waitaha lineage. Even though Waitaha had been completely assimilated, they were moved from the North Island slowly but surely under pressure from the Polynesian Māori down into the South Island where they were virtually overrun by the Ngāti Mamoi and in turn Ngāti Mamoi were overrun by Naitahu who moved down from the North Island and so consequently Waitaha almost disappeared. But in the assimilation um, what a lot of um, Māori did not know in that day is that the woman were the carriers of the story. They carried the lineage of the Waitaha people. Waitaha were a matriarchal people. And over the next three to four hundred years, the stories were kept by the woman 
They had 2,000 stories, which they, they were songs. In the form and of a song. Yes, and yeah. they used to, to sing and chant the songs. It's a little like we would do with nursery rhymes when we were small. We could learn them by rote. Now, it came a time when there was a celestial alignment of planetary alignment, I think in uh, 1989, and the people of Waitaha, the people carrying the story in that day were the men that had transferred to the older men. Mm -hmm. And they said, now is the time we must tell the story of Waitaha and put it out there and tell the world of Waitaha. So consequently, um, the uh, book was published and it was edited by a man called Barry Brailsford, uh, an academic, archeologist and historian. And he um, was taken by these elders, these elderly men into the confidence. He was virtually initiated into certain rites. But when it came, it was a watershed. And for that's what you history. were fascinated by these stories, weren't you? I was, and I thought, cripes, is this right? Mm -hmm. It's something that I had known of, but ne there was never any proof that I could sort of hang my hat on. So I started to travel around New Zealand, looking at places, places mentioned mm -hmm. uh, in Song of Waitaha, and so consequently, swimming rivers, climbing mountains, jet boat trips, helicopter trips. We went all over the place, my wife and myself. Fascinating. Looking really? at yeah. the sites mentioned in Song of Waitaha for verification. And your verdict at the end of this? My journey? verdict at the end of this, that the stories were so true and so incredible as to almost be beyond truth. This is why so many people were offended or couldn't understand what the story was about. It was right in their face. A people, a whole race of people, with 200 iwi right throughout New Zealand. How could they have existed? And we didn't know about them. Why is it important to uh, tell this story? Because I've always maintained that if they've got the deeper history of New Zealand incorrect, and by the way, we can now go back four and a half thousand years, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> and um, if they've got that, that incorrect, I have a deep interest in marine archeology. span and we've been doing a lot of shipwreck work up on the um, west coast out of Dargaville and Bailey's Beach. 100 kilometres drivable beach. Within that 100 kilometres, there are 155 shipwrecks. And we've been looking uh, for clues to a Portuguese or Spanish ship. So once again, it is a history thing. Um, there are stories saying that these people uh, came here, and this was an early European contact. So I figured if I can prove mm. A, a deeper Māori history, it might help them to prove a deeper European contact history. So it's a stepping stone, it's a stage. It's interesting now that the stories are being backed up by Māori people themselves. You can travel around the South Island now, Gerard, and you'll see signs which refer to Waitaha, and they have dates there, like 900 uh, AD. So it's gone back already four to 500 years. It's what, moving back. Now, you, you're, talk, you're on the show today, of course, you're talking to a lot of people and um, um, you've got a good website. What sort of interest are you attracting from the New Zealand people? Is there an insatiable desire to, to know our history? Are you finding that? In some respects, yes. But also in some respects, there's people out there that I'd like to refer to as the rednecks. I don't call Māori people indigenous people because they are like ourselves. Our forebears came here over the last 200 years. Māori's forebears came here five to six, 700 years ago. So I like to look at the fact that we're all um, refugees <laughs> coming to this land yeah. at the bottom end of the earth. Honestly, uh, Gary, we could talk for um, oh, a day on this. It's fascinating, but we've only got about 10 minutes. But um, if people want to know more, if people want to know more about Gary Cook, uh, you've got a website. Uh, what's the website called, uh, Gary? The re website is just simply... Uh, dub, dub, dub. Yeah, secretland. Secretland. Dot co dot nz. Dot co dot nz. Now, you've written three books. Three books. Uh, what are the three books? Three books. We've got um, The People Before. People Before. Journeys into the Mystery. And, and Deeper into the deeper Mystery. Deeper into the Mystery. Fascinating books, and they're all available on your website to buy if, if you'd like to uh, look into this further. But um, what about our viewers throughout New Zealand? Uh, wouldn't it be a great pleasure if we could take three of those books and they could win a, win a copy? Why not? I'd, and, lo I'd love to do that. And I've we, just, yeah, I'd love to spe you know, spread my story. Okay, now the, the, the book I think will, because we've been talking about it today, The People Before, three copies of that. 
And we need a qualifying question, which they send in with their email. Uh, Gary, can you think of a good question that they should answer? Yes. What is the name of the forgotten people of New Zealand I've been talking about? What is the name of the forgotten people of New Zealand? And it is? Waitaha. Waitaha. How would you spell that? Uh, W-A-I. Yeah. T-A-H-A. T-A-H-A. Waitaha. You could send your email to Jared if the beat goes on. Waitaha is the um, qualifying word, and uh, we've got three books to give away. Gary, wonderful to talk to you. It's Gerard, a fascinating subject, isn't it? Thank you for the time. It was a pleasure to be able to sit here and share a little of the story. Great. Thank you, Gary.